Okay, hi, my name's Paul Thomas and I'll be representing my company, Mycorrhizal Systems. And we're looking for an investment of £75,000. Now, Mycorrhizal Systems is a company based around the production of black truffles. Uh, the truffles are actually a form of underground mushroom and it grows in conjunction with tree roots. And the demand for these truffles is currently so high that they command more per unit weight than is paid for gold on a wholesale price. That's £1,000 a kilogram based on last year's prices. Because of this um, high value, many people have tried to cultivate their truffle, but only very few have succeeded. What we've developed is an enhanced technique, and using this enhanced technique, with 2,500 trees, we can expect a turnover in excess of a million pounds within this five to seven years. And what we're asking for is the £75,000 is to buy land so we can set up this plantation. There's also the potential of a 10% profit share and if you take this, this will give you an income of in excess of £100,000 a year. So in summary, Mycorrhizal Systems represents an environmentally sound, financially secure and potentially very high yielding investment. So thank you for listening. Paul has come up with an unconventional plan to use his own research to start a truffle plantation. He needs £75,000 to buy land and in return he's offering a 10% share of his profits. But before they get down to business, Duncan Bannatyne has a problem. Please, please excuse my absolute ignorance. Yes. Yeah. But I have to ask, what is a black truffle? I've never heard of them. OK, sorry, yeah, it's a very highly prized uh, form of fungus which grows underground and it looks kind of like a warty black lump almost, but they command very high prizes there. You what do you do with had, them? You must have had them at the Ivy, sprinkled over your pasta. It's food. Yeah. It's the yeah. most yeah. delicious yeah. gourmet just taste you could ever have. Sprinkled a little yes. black truffle sauce. No, you got it. I just had to ask that one. <laughs> Wild truffles are rare, and because they grow on the roots of trees, they're notoriously difficult to find. Paul says he's found a way of cultivating trees in a laboratory that he guarantees that truffles will grow on. So nobody else is trying to culture them in the laboratory environment? I don't know anyone who has cultured it. Obviously, it's a very secretive business. And, and you, can, you can successfully, um, in a repeatable basis, culture it in the yes, lab? Yes, yes. I buy everything you said. You've got a real innovation here. And I'm trying to figure out where your stage you're at so I can figure out how, to, how one might make some money on the thing. OK, we're ready to get the trees started and germinated and get them in the field, but we haven't produced the truffles. So, you, so what we know right now is that you can do it in the lab? Yep. Paul wants to spend £75,000 on buying land for his truffle plantation, but Doug Richard has discovered that he hasn't actually grown any truffles yet. Simon Woodruff needs convincing. How do you know whether this works or not? We or when will you know? A uh, period of time before they start yielding will be five to seven years, so before we know that, we can, that they're producing these top yields will be then. So you've got to wait five to seven years, and the investor's got to wait five to seven years to see if this works or not. So you had me, you mm -hmm. appeared so confident, yes. and you seemed to know your subject so well, yeah. but now I'm thinking this is a great big gamble. The Dragons have realised it could be up to seven years before Paul finds out whether his extraordinary venture has succeeded. This is a long wait and a big gamble for any investor. For £75,000, Peter Jones isn't prepared to take the risk. This seems to be such a dream, and it's a dream beyond belief. All I can tell you is that if this works, guys, it's going to be great over five or seven years. You can't expect an investor with any level of solid thoughts, apart from this may be a bit of fun, to invest in that business. Peter, and, and I, Paul's presented really well. And actually, you've come up with something that I suspect is, is unique and actually very marketable. And I think you should be applauded for that. Well, Rachel, you need to hold on to your money because you're going to lose it very quickly if you've got that attitude. At the end of the day, well, if it's not no, going to make you money, if it's not going to make you money, you shouldn't be interested. The so. proposition that Paul's put forward <laughs> is actually, this is an investment in a piece of freehold land with a profit share on what you can yield. Yeah. So actually, from that point of view, it's actually a pretty good investment because you're investing in a piece of freehold land and we all know where land goes ultimately o over long periods of time. Generally speaking, it goes up. Well, I could invest in land tomorrow. I could go and if somebody could come and pitch here, I'll stand up there and say, three pieces of land, Rachel, there you go. Here's £100,000 I want today. But we all know land increases. That's not a reality of life. It's a protection on your investment, well, isn't it? That's a nonsense. It? I think for, for me, we may as well go and invest in a garden centre because that's what the reality is. They and, do very well, and, Peter. And, I, and I'm sure they do. I don't think this is ever going to make money. This is a pipe dream from university that you've had. So I'm out. 
The first dragon is out. Paul's truffle plantation has created a huge difference of opinion between Rachel Elnor and Peter Jones. Duncan Bannatyne has thought of a different problem. Truffles worth more than their weight in gold left in a field? If you don't secure your land before you start harvesting the truffles, they won't be there when you go to harvest them. We would have to have very strong fences put in place. Where's the money coming from? Uh, for the security. Yeah. That would come as soon as we start to harvest the truffles. So as soon as we start to harvest them and get them out and we know they're producing, then that, that first year's profits would be incorporated. Into I don't know if you put the chicken before the egg or the egg before the chicken. Mm. How can you harvest them if they've been stolen? And how can you fund security if you haven't harvested any to, to fund it? it? It doesn't work out. It's bizarre. The, the... I, I think you're in dreamland, honestly. I think you should really try a different method of, of, of making money out of this. Yep. And so I'm not going to invest. Duncan Bannatyne is out. The dragons are pulling apart Paul's idea bit by bit. With no means of protecting his valuable truffles and a seven-year wait for uncertain results, Paul's proposal looks more like speculation in land than investment in a business. And there's more bad news. Paul. Yes. I'm not really interested in buying land and hedging. I, I think that's a, it's an elegant proposal. And I think there's a category of investor who will find that attractive. What I find interesting are high-risk, high-return investments. Yeah. So I wish you the best of luck, but I'm out. So far, Paul has not persuaded anyone to invest in his adventure. Duncan Bannatyne, Peter Jones and Doug Richard are all out. Whilst they aren't prepared to throw their money into his idea, it seems one dragon might be. I think this sounds a lot of fun, Paul. I really do think this sounds a lot of fun. How much is the land going to cost? Uh, we're budgeting the 75,000 for the land, but potentially we could get it a lot cheaper. How much land? Five hectares. Do you know where it is? I know. I've got several... I've got a rough lot with me here, this black area here. This has to be in a particular part of France. Yes, these are proven areas where it grows wild anyway, and they're on the right bedrock, the right soil conditions. Yeah, what about if I just went and bought you a piece of land? How would we do the deal? Um, yeah. I think at the end of five to seven years yep. that I get my land back. It's my choice. Yep. And then we're both free to go each other's ways. But if I, if I has a truffle plantation on it, it's producing very high yields, it will, it will be worth, okay. worth a very large amount. All right. And also, if I'm going to put the time in, as long as it's producing a large amount of truffles, I'd like to keep that land going and keep the plantation going so I've got a constant income from it. It'd be good okay, to... Okay, well, I think if I'd earned, say, the £75,000, mm -hmm. plus, say, 100% return over that period of time, a minimum as a, as a bottom, yeah. Yeah. the land would then transfer into the company and be owned by the company. Yeah. So far in the Dragon's Den, Simon Woodruff has not made an investment, but he's showing interest in Paul's grand plan. Will he go all the way and invest? What percentage of the company would you give to me? I was looking at a 10% a profit share or equity share, how, however we work it, uh, negotiating. What but about 25% ownership of the company? I'm not, I'm not really sure uh, as to the... Pro possibly... Let me think about this and I'll come back to you on this one. Simon Woodruff is stalling, but Rachel Elnor has yet to show her hand. Will she decide to gamble on Paul's £75,000 adventure? I think almost always in business, nothing is a guaranteed surefire thing. There's always risk and uncertainty in business. And actually, that's the fun of it. Yeah. This is yeah. like a pen little pension fund that's type investment, and I think it's interesting. And I'd go in 50-50 with Simon on that basis. Mm, and I would treat it yeah. as a speculative investment, but I, I, yeah. I actually like you, and I think you need someone to, to back you. Are you, are you interested, Simon? Or... Yeah. First of all, I'm not interested in doing a deal with anybody else involved. Yeah. I'm not interested if Rachel comes in. Okay. I think we'll have a very, very good relationship, mm -hmm. and I think we'll do other things together. And that's what I'm investing in. I'd like to be your mentor and I'd like to really help you. After a series of battles with Rachel Elnor, Simon Woodruff has finally put his money where his mouth is. He wants nothing to do with Rachel and has decided to go it alone and invest the full £75,000. Paul, listen, I won't stand in the way of Simon, but I'm upset that he doesn't want to do the investment with yeah. me, but I'm happy for you to, to do that deal. Okay. I'm happy with 25%. Yep. And um, if you're happy it's a deal and you go down and find the land, I'll buy it. Yep, 25. 
Done. Okay. Okay. So look at the nation for truffles, right? Paul's got his money. Despite the uncertainty, Simon Woodruff and Rachel Elnor were both keen to invest, but it was Simon who clinched the deal. You can go now. That way. <laughs> Simon's answered his critics. I can't wait to taste your well trouble, Simon. Simon. Yes, you well can. Done. Seven years is how long you're going to wait. I'm really upset that you didn't want to go into investment with me, though. It's nothing to do with you, Rachel. I think this is one deal that I just want to do on my own with a guy that I like, straightforward. It's a relationship. Yes. It's not just about a deal. And as soon as you get three people, you know what it's like in bed with three. <laughs> Maybe no, fun, actually. but it doesn't work. But please tell me. Paul, yep. well done. Are you happy? Uh, yes, yes, very happy. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I think it, I secured a very good deal with Simon there. So yes, very happy. But I hadn't, I hadn't planned on building up such a big business, but with Simon's help, I think it, I think it could be very exciting and very good. Now, what about there were a couple of them who were just totally negative, didn't yeah. bite? Well, I mean, were you surprised at that? Um, no, no, I wasn't surprised at all. I think, um, uh, I think a couple of people, perhaps because I didn't explain, explain fully, uh, are probably my fault in communicating the idea. Oh, you've been very but, polite. I mean, one of them yeah. didn't even know what a truffle was. I mean, that Yeah, was... but that's fine. I, I don't expect them to know what a truffle was. Okay, well, uh, really good luck. Thank I you I hope much. it goes well with Simon. Cheers. Cheers.